beautiful real estate entrepreneur, I love you. Let's find a cash buyer for your deal in the next I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour. You implement what I'm gonna show you here. You should be able to sell your deals very fast, that fast. Could be five minutes, it could be an hour, but you can do it within that time frame by just following these instructions here. Before we get into that though, look at this. This is the cash buyer ladder. This is critical, all right? Different types of buyers with different types of exit strategies will give you more or less for your deals. All right, if you're gonna sell it to another wholesaler, they need to have enough meat on the bone to sell to their investors and get paid. So the very bottom, if you sell it to other wholesalers, that's the lowest amount typically that you're gonna get. Next is gonna be fix and flippers because they need to make sure that they can get their profitability. And I'm gonna break that down on the whiteboard in just a second, what's going on currently, because there has been some major changes because interest rates have gone up. I wanna make sure that you're getting your properties locked up at the right price. After that is your buy, renovate, uh, rent, and refinance, your BRRRR strategy uh, buyers. Typically, they're going to be pulling their money out uh, once they get it looking beautiful. So they're going to be a little bit more than a, a little bit more aggressive than a fix and flipper uh, because they're going to keep it in their portfolio. And then that leads us to the rental portfolio buyers. These are fantastic because, you know, typically they're not looking for properties that need a tremendous amount of renovation. They're going to keep it in their portfolio. They're not concerned about getting their money out right away in a flip would be or a burr. So they tend to tend to be closer to um, the after repaired value than, say, a fix and flipper or a burr strategy would be. Next would be Airbnb. They obviously see this as they're going to get massive cash flow from these properties, so they're more aggressive. After that is value add. Now, a value add is basically taking a small house, adding square footage to it, and then increasing the total value of these properties. And you see this very common in very, very popular neighborhoods where the older properties are getting completely renovated and they no longer uh, suit um, the, the, the families no longer look for uh, 1,500 square foot properties. They're looking for something that suits their needs better that are closer to like 2,000, 25, 3,000 square feet. And you see that in any major market. After that are people that are going to live there. People that are going to live in that house, their family lives there. They love the school district. They love that street. It's been their dream to be there. We all have these in certain communities around the country. People will spend whatever they can to get into that specific neighborhood, and they want to live there. It doesn't matter if it needs massive renovations or just updating. They want to live in that neighborhood, and it's worth it to them to pay higher than, um, than a fix and flipper for sure, right? After that is your hedge fund and institutional buyers. Typically, they're looking for newer properties that they can add to their portfolio with a quick little renovation and sell. And then the, the, the top of the top of the top is creative finance because, you know, it doesn't really matter about the price if the terms are right. So uh, this is important to understand because if you have a nice healthy mix of all of these, then you're gonna, you're, you're gonna know, you know what strategy and who to talk to and what cash buyers to bring what deals to depending on what you think the highest and best use of that property is. Imagine this, imagine if you have a cousin or friend that's like, if you find anything in this neighborhood, I'll buy it. Okay, great, it's gotta be cash. Yeah, no problem, I'll buy it cash. Okay, great. And then you find something, you could specifically target that neighborhood and then sell it. And if you were to take that to another wholesaler or a fix and flipper, they would give you 20, 30, $40,000 less. So really, it's really important to kind of put these, these different buyers into different buckets um, for when you are selling, when you're dispoing your deals, all right? Awesome. Now, something that I wanna mention, and I said that I would, is this, all right? This is the changes that I've been hearing from the big time investors in Phoenix, Arizona. And I hear this commonplace around the country with the uh, flippers that are doing the most deals, all right? What they're taking into account is the increase in interest rate, and this is how they're doing it. Now, we know that um, if you're in a strong market um, like Phoenix, 
uh, like any major market, if you've got a million people plus in the surrounding area or whatever else, typically you're going to be uh, after repaired value. So this is the fixed up value. This is when it's looking beautiful. It's looking perfect. You take the after repaired value and you times it by 80%. You minus repairs. And that's usually your wholesale price. And then it is, uh, and then you subtract your uh, wholesale fee. Fee from that, whatever it is, 10,000, 15, 20, 25, whatever your wholesale fee is. And that is your max allowable offer that you're gonna give to the seller. All right, this is what you can go up to. You get paid this, they pay this, and then they go and they, they, they fix it up and they do their thing, right? Now, this is typical for fix and flippers which is what we run into, right? Um, especially with really rough properties. And the, the rougher the property, the more opportunity the property because people just want to get rid of it. And a lot of people don't have significant investment to put into those properties. So it becomes a major problem, all right? Now, if you are in smaller markets and the inventory goes a little bit slower, and uh, if you have questions on that, put it in the comments section. And I can break down what the difference between the two markets are. But ARV times 70% is the typical um, uh, way that you want to run your numbers when it's in a slower market that has inventory that's sitting longer. It's very easy to, ch uh, to, to check for that. Um, but so ARV times 70% minus repairs, wholesale price, wholesale fee, max, max allowable offer and salary. Now... Now, here's the twist. The big time buyers are taking another 3% out. They're going 77% and they're going 67% because, and this is, this is specific, let me, let me make this specific. Most of the flippers are looking to sell properties at median sell price and below, right? Usually the projects, the fix up costs are, are, are reasonable in those areas, typically it's like between 1,000 and 2,500 square foot houses. And so you don't get into these huge, you know, two, $300,000 budgets to fix up these properties. That's really the bread and butter of a lot of professional flippers. And what they sell a lot of their properties for to are first time home buyers. What do first time home buyers need? They need something called concessions. So what that means is when, they're, when this property hits the market and it's looking beautiful, and they're going to put an offer in on this property and they're negotiating with this seller, with this flipper. They're saying, hey, listen, I need an additional two to three percent to buy down the interest rate to pay for my closing costs um, and whatever else, you know, a home warranty or some other things that could be in there. Um, that's that's what they're looking for is just basically closing costs, title fees, all that, and to pay, uh, pay down their points to make their, their monthly payment lower. And because of that, I've been having a lot of conversations with people that are doing a lot of flips and that's what they're doing. They're, they're reducing it. So that means you either have to reduce yours uh, it's going to reduce all of this down. This is going to be down another 3%. So start making that. Start playing around with that. Now, if you see that everything's flying off the shelf with your deals and you love selling to the big boys and girls, then um, maybe you make less or you adjust your prices down with the seller. But it is a factor. It is a factor. All right? Next, let's say... You just locked up a deal, all right? And you're looking for the absolute best cash buyers that you can communicate. Let me show you one thing that I think is often not thought about is LinkedIn. Now, with LinkedIn, you have to have, uh, <laughs> you, you have, to have an account or they block, they, they don't give you much access to anything, right? And so um, with LinkedIn, this is literally what I want you to do. I want you to go there and put real estate investor in whatever city you're in, and then just look at all the people, look at all the companies. Let me tell you something about this. And I've said this on this channel, but it's probably buried in past episodes years and years and years ago, maybe, maybe more recently, I don't know. Um, I did this and I found a guy named Josiah Grimes. Josiah Grimes, I he had his phone number on there. It, uh, it was awesome. Um, it's... I reached out to him and I said, you know, um, 
Uh, I've got I, all day long. I'm making calls to property owners, and um, I find find some deals. When I find some deals, kind of bring it to. And he's like, "Yeah, absolutely." So I did. That day, I found a deal. The next day, I locked up the deal. I called Josiah, and I told him about the deal. And he said, "Okay, great. Let me see what I got." And then he sold it, and I made twelve thousand dollars. And I was like, "Wow, this is a great relationship." Well, guess who his business partner was. Jamil Damji, one of my best friends now. That's how we met. That's literally how we met back in uh, 2014. Um, and so uh, absolutely incredible what happens when you just do that. And look at this. Look at all these. You've got real estate investor and private lender. Uh, the, the, private lender, private lender, uh, mobile home parks. Um, you know, all of these, all of these people you should be reaching out and connecting with. And you can connect right through LinkedIn. Oftentimes they have their phone number in LinkedIn. Okay? I mean, absolutely incredible. This isn't the only tool that I'm going to give you, but this is one that I think is really powerful. One, listen, there's something to be said. It just feels classier, in my opinion, to have a LinkedIn account and to be kind of active in there. I'm not very active, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not classy. But when I see people in there that are, I'm like, wow, they have a legitimate business. These are people that I should be reaching out to as opposed to somebody that doesn't even have their picture on social media or anything. They're just a mystery. And then all of a sudden you're trying to look them up and see if they're legit and there's nothing. But then you see somebody on LinkedIn and there's everything. It's awesome. Make sure you use it. Get in there. Do that. Next. What I want you to do, this is how you sell them. You can sell a deal in five minutes. You can call one of these people in your area, call them up, say you got a deal, send it to them, boom, it's done. I'm telling you, every single second of every single minute, of every single hour, of every single day, this is happening, right? So next one, what I want you to do is I want you to type in sell my house fast, sell my house for cash, whatever it is. Just keep playing around with that. Go through pages one and two in Google. I know it's scary. Like nothing's, uh, <laughs> nothing's more of a mystery than page two of a Google search. I get it. But go through the first two pages and start reaching out to the people. And if they don't answer their phone live, one, that's ridiculous. You should always answer your calls live. Um, call them. Hopefully they answer live and just talk to them. Let them know what you're doing. And two, if they don't, put in your information into their, uh, into their website and, and boom, they, uh, they'll reach out. Trust me, they'll reach out. And so start building those people up. And now oftentimes, just as a disclaimer here, when you go to these, most of these times, these people are wholesalers, which is fantastic. I know that they're at the bottom of the cash buyer ladder. I get it but they have a tremendous amount of resources. They have a tremendous amount of, of, of uh, cash buyer database, and they can reach out to who they know and sell that deal. And sometimes when you're getting started, oftentimes when you're getting started, you're gonna rely on other wholesalers to help you out. And it might, you might have to split the deal 50-50, whatever. Get the experience, go from faith to fact that you can do this business, right? Do your first deal, and then just keep going and going and going. But do not, do not, we need to put like flashing lights up here. Do not become a cash buyer employee, all right? That's when you sell to the same cash buyer over and over and over, or to the same wholesaler over and over and over and over, because you will make 50% of what you could. Just telling you, build it robust, build really great relationships, but build it robust, all right? Um, so put it in there, sell my house fast, sell my house cash, get in there, start having those conversations. Next. You know when you're driving around and you see those signs that are like, we buy houses and or they put like specifics, oh, a four bedroom house worth 490, but only 300 and they have a phone number, call that number. Call the, call the, call the uh, for sale or for rent by owner signs. Uh, or, you, know, you know what I mean? The, the bandit signs, call them and see who that is and start making the connection there. It's incredible. You can find some really, really, really great relationships. I did this back in 2007. And I met a guy uh, named Derek Jar, who turned into one of my mentors. Incredible guy. Turned into a developer. 
He builds big luxury homes now. He's phenomenal. And uh, he, he was just putting out bandit signs at the time. He was just getting his biz business going. And he had a bunch of people. And he was teaching people creative finance and the whole thing. It was awesome. I'm telling you, 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 it's amazing the connections that you can make if you're just super proactive and, and reach out to other investors and how many doors that opens up for you. Next, boom. People don't realize this. Google uh, hard money loans for real estate. Hard money loans for real estate. And then just look, and then you can get into the ones that are specifically in your area. Be at the ones that are specifically in your area. Let me tell you something about hard money lenders. They are the biggest repository of cash buyers of all time. Where do you think cash buyers get their cash from? Where do you think they get it from? Hard money lenders. Like 90% of the time, they're getting a hard money loan from one of these guys in town. And if you understand hard money loans, you understand that these guys are always trying to find opportunities. Let me explain real quick. For anybody that's brand new to understanding what uh, hard money is, all right? What happens is, let's say you've got a wealthy doctor, attorney, entrepreneur, trust fund baby, whatever it is. They have money. Do you know what people with money love doing and they hate doing? They love making money and they, they love making money, hate losing money. So what they do is they give it to our hard money lenders. And the hard money lenders give them a guarantee of somewhere between 8%, depending on the market, all the way up to like 16% return on their money. Well, what does a hard money lender have to do? They have to find houses and projects to put these this money into. And what they do is they charge 14 to 18%. Sometimes it's lower. Sometimes it's 10 or whatever. You get it. Right, so they make the spread between these numbers, right? This hard money lender does, but also they charge fees. They charge origination fees. You pay a point, which is a percentage, a, a percent. You pay a flat fee, 500 bucks. You pay, a, you guarantee a month of payment to them. Whatever it is, they're making their money, lending money on projects. Well, if they're People that are doing, their investors aren't doing, pro this is guaranteed, by the way. You get, they put money in here. Every month, they're sending money back in small little increments on what they made in interest, whether they have that money lent out or not. So what do they want to do? They want to lend out that money all the time. And they have all the buyers. So you reach out, you start building relationships. And by the way, these are the guys to know. These long-term, long-term business, this is who you should be. This is who, this is, this is the goal. This is the end goal. Be the bank, for sure. But these are the guys that you want to be. These are the mentors you want to have. These are the connections that you want to be with. These are the people that know everybody. They know people doing commercial. They know people doing development. They know fix and flippers. They know the best, the, the top wholesalers. They know the best title companies. They know the best mortgage lenders. They know everybody. This is this is King B right here. This is this is the this is this is the kings and queens right here for sure right here. Absolutely incredible. Be a hard money lender, but they got to get that money going, and so they've got all they've got the all of the cash buyers. They've got them all. We got them all right here, and these guys either already have projects or are looking for projects. And a lot of times they have their own cash buyer database, and they will blast out your deals to their database. Or they'll just go, listen, Ron and Susan, they love that neighborhood. They're, they will buy this deal from you. I, I'm telling you they will. Let me, let me connect you two. I'm telling you, don't sleep on that. Don't be like, oh my gosh, that's so intimidating. They have so much, this is how I felt. This is how I felt. Oh my gosh, they have, they have so much money. I don't have any money. They, they've done so many deals. They're gonna, they're, they're gonna think that, uh, that I'm a waste of time. They're gonna, oh, don't think like that. That's absolutely not the truth. Build those relationships, have the confidence, talk to as many as you can, get them into your, into your phone, have those conversations, text with them, reach out to them. They will help you sell their deals. So oftentimes they're wholesalers themselves, 
Um, they have two two divisions in their business, their wholesaling side and their funding side so that they can work hand in hand and always have inventory so that they can place their money. You guys get it. That makes sense? I hope so. Put it in the comments if that makes sense uh, or if you want to be a hard money lender eventually. I'd be curious to know who does. I'd be curious to know if that hits a string, if I should be like talking more about the, the progress to get to that path because it's really, really interesting. I'm in, on it now and I'd love to share it with you, but I don't know if you wanna hear about it. So put it in the comments section if you are. Next, Facebook groups. Facebook groups, boom. Get in the Facebook groups and this is what I love doing. This is really, really, really important. Uh, everybody in here is great, everything's great. I want the group buy. Who's the group buy? It's at the top, it's, it's a little teeny thing. It says group buy and then it has the name. I want you to get in there because that has the phone number and it has the person that you need to be reaching out to that is going to um, connect you with everybody, right? They've got this whole group. They have this whole group because, you know, they're obviously doing deals. So reach out, go to every single one of those investor groups. I don't care if it's five people or 50,000 people. Go there and reach out to the people that are running that group, that, that um, group buy, and then reach out to them, all right? That's gonna be absolutely important to do. Next, real estate agents that have flip properties. This is a great example. You know what a fresh flip property is. One, it's updated, right? It's in good shape. Property's in good shape. It's ready to go. Uh, it's uh, it, it doesn't have clothes in in the closet. It doesn't have soaps out. It doesn't have dishes out. You know, some sometimes they're staged, which is fantastic. But you could tell you could tell if it feels like a model home type of thing, right? And then what I want you to do is I want you to go into the um, Zillow or Redfin or Realtor.com, whatever you want to do. And don't just go, don't do, do this one right here where it's like contact agent, don't do that. You're gonna piss off this agent that's gonna spend a lot of money because Zillow will literally charge them for you reaching out that way. Don't do that. Go down here to where it says listed by. Listed by, right there. Go to listed by, reach out to who it's listed by and say, this is, this is the cheat code for this. And this is, this is something great. And this is something that I learned from Jamil Damji, who I mentioned earlier. Um, go in and just find something specific that you like about the property, something that sticks out. When I was looking at this, I was I, I, I like this, this shower here. And just call them up and just say, hey, listen, my name's Brent. I know that this is out of the blue, but um, I find off-market deals all the time, real estate deals all the time. I see that you do flips. I'm looking at your property here in Phoenix, say the address. Uh, oh my gosh, the inlay of the tile in the shower. I love that, that was a really nice touch. You guys are phenomenal. I really like the product that you guys are putting out. Um, if I come across a really good deal, um, can I reach out to you? They'll say yes. Can I reach out to you? Can I reach out to you, send you the details on that? Yes, I would love that. That would be phenomenal. Now you've got a, and by the way, oftentimes the listing agent is either partners with or is the actual flipper themselves. So if I had a deal in a certain zip code, I would plug in that zip code or area or city or whatever, just depends on where you're at. And I would, I would look for all the flips going on. I would call every single agent right now. Be like, listen, I've got a deal in this area and I think it would be a phenomenal deal. I love what you did there. I love the inlay, blah, blah, blah. You get it. Um, do, you want, can I, do you want me to send it over to you? Are you guys looking to buy some more? What are they going to say? They're going to say yes. And then you send it over to them and you get it sold. Some of them, some of the really, really, really good agents, the investor agents are like, they've got like 10 or 20 really great flippers that they've helped out, like grow their business. Because, you know, when people are getting started, oftentimes they're like, okay, I need a real estate agent to run the numbers. I need a real estate agent to list it. I need a real estate agent to uh, take care of everything with the transactions so that I can keep flipping. And then they just pile all those people up and then they tell their friends and they tell their, the people that they're connecting with. Oh, this agent's phenomenal. They do it for this discount and they do everything and they, they take care of everything. And that way I can just stay focused and, and hang out with my family and, and flip houses and do what I love doing. 
and then they build up their portfolio of uh, buyers. So reach out to those portfolio, I mean, reach out to the agent and they'll give you access to that portfolio. Not direct, you'll go through them, but man, we've had, we have some agents here that we have sold a lot of properties to, or through, I should say. Absolutely phenomenal. They, the, real estate agents are, can be a huge asset to your team. Huge, huge, huge asset. So don't, don't shy away from them, all right? Next, here's another one. You wanna move up that cash buyer ladder to the rental portfolio buyers? Go to affordablehousing.com. Guess what affordablehousing.com is? It's a listing of all the Section 8 housing. What's Section 8 housing? That's the government literally subsidizes and or pays the full um, rental amount for, um, for people in need, people that need that support, to investors. And investors love it. Because one, they have to keep the house up because there's regular inspections by Section 8 that, that are done either yearly or, or um, uh, every six months. Is that bi-yearly? I don't know, biannually? Is that two or is that every two years? I think that's bicycle, yeah, two, uh, biannually. Um, and uh, look at this, this is great. It literally has the owner or the property manager's phone number right there. When I found that out, I was shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. They've got a property, and, and you can do it by area, you can do it by city, you can, you can really filter it out for your specific. If you're, if you're looking, you're like, you know what, this property doesn't need a tremendous amount of repairs. I wonder if I could sell this to a, um, a buyer that's gonna put it into their portfolio. Because it's in a good area, um, they're gonna get you know, Section 8 uh, funding for it. Not funding, but at least um, payments from it. So this is a really great resource. I think that, that especially if you're living in areas that's a very strong cash flow market, remember there's two types of markets, right? There's appreciation markets and then there's cash flow markets, right? There's San Diego and there's Indianapolis. You know what I'm saying? Like there's uh, Seattle and there is uh, Memphis. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so if you're in one of those cash flow markets, this could be a really, really, really great resource for you to sell to people that, that have a fund, that buy a lot of these properties, that put them into Section 8 housing, and, uh, and I think that you can really do some damage there. Now, let me show you my favorite. Now, these are just the free resources, guys. I want to always give you the opportunity to do this on a low budget. You want to step up a little bit? Step up a little bit with the big boys and girls. Uh, Audantic. Audantic. Audantic has this thing called uh, Buyer Sonar. And it is the most gangster tool we've ever used. It literally shows you every single buyer what they have bought in the last six months. And you can adjust the filters. You can go the last month, whatever. Uh, it shows you their average purchase price, the average discount they buy, and their last purchase. Not only that, when you, when you click on them, let's get rid of the open doors and all these other ones, but let's look at uh, some of these properties that, that maybe um, are just owned by regular people. Here we go, we'll go here. Um, you get their, their address here in the LLC, and then you just Google the LLC and you find out who the um, managing member is. And then you reach out to them. And oftentimes these LLCs also have websites and the websites have phone numbers. So we reverse engineer all of these things and it's absolutely awesome. And look, look you can go in here and you can see what properties they bought. What property, well wow, that's a goofy one because they, they bought a bunch in a, in a portfolio. But here, look at this. All of these properties, where did they buy them? And you could filter it by zip code, by city, by all these things. I don't know what buyer sonar costs. I really don't. I reached out to the owner, and he's trying to figure out how to, how to price this thing. But it comes with um, Audantic um, if you buy their data, their, their, um, their seller data. They're, just, they're most likely sellers to sell at a discount data. Uh, but man alive, this is a great tool. 
I mean, you go and, and you see the legit. You ever, you ever, you know, wonder if a cash buyer is really a cash buyer? You know what I mean? Are they really a cash buyer? Or are they just going to wholesale this? You know what I mean? Are, are they here? Or are they here on that ladder? You know, and what, where, where in that ladder are they? Are they tricking me and just saying, yeah, 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 I'll buy that. I buy a lot of houses. I buy so many houses, right? And then you're like, okay, what's your LLC name that you want for this assignment? And then you could do research to see if they actually buy properties. Might help you avoid the, um, you know, the ones that are kind of trying to, you know, wear the uh, sheep's skin, you know? They're really just wolves. You know what I mean? Man, that's a good analogy. I'm crushing it today on this one. This is really good, Matt. Um, but anyway, you, you know what I mean? They're wolf and sheep's clothing. They're, they're just gonna, they're gonna sell that deal. They're never gonna close on that deal. And a lot of people say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'll put 5,000 non-refundable down, great. That's what you want. Remember, when you're working with your cash buyers, 5,000 non-refundable deposit, that's what you want. Absolutely, every single time. If you're in the lower price, maybe 3,000. I'm fine with that. Higher price, 10,000 for sure. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want to take anybody's earnest money. I just want to close the deal, right? I don't want to slow down the process of, the, of all these things. I want it to be done in the time that's on the contract. I want the contract. I want it to be done by this closing date or before. And this is a great way to filter to make sure that they're buying properties. Man, these guys have bought 59 properties in the last six months. These are real buyers. And you got to add, you got to add the top 100 buyers. You got to, you got, it, it has to be a mission of your team to add the top 100 buyers. It has to be. It's so powerful, right? And again, we go back to the point that I mentioned before in the whiteboard. The biggest and baddest buyers in town, the people that do the most flips are not going to pay you the most. You're going to get the most from somebody that's doing one or two flips a year or they're buying it for some other reason in the cash buyer ladder. They just have a different strategy. But fix and flip companies buy the most and they're smooth and they have the most cash and, and they're ready to go and it's just beautiful. But they will be three to 10% of the, of the price lower than your other offers. Typically it's gonna be three to five, but it could be 10. But the reason to build a relationship with them and maybe take less on a deal, not tremendous less. You can always negotiate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take less than 3% uh, off of what you could sell it to somebody else for and so, sell it to these guys to build a relationship because when the market shifts, everybody else that's new runs for the hills or the people that get stuck with some of these properties and they can't convert them into rentals like these other big guys can, um, you don't have any more buyers. So it's a wonderful little balancing act, right? It's a wonderful little balancing act of, okay, do I sell for the most amount to the people that are doing just a few or do I build a really, really, really good relationship with the people that'll buy all my deals super smooth? There's no buyers going to the house. There's not a bunch of people snaking your deals because you put it out to a list of 100 or 1,000 or God forbid you post it to like Facebook. Do not post your deals to Facebook. Do not post your deals to Facebook or Craigslist or anything like that. Do not do that. You will have so many snakes knocking on that door trying to, trying to coerce that seller to cancel your deal and take their deal. That's people's business plans, literally. Do not do that. So there's something to be said about, you know what, I'm gonna sell to these, these big guys. They're not gonna need a tremendous amount of, you know, it's not gonna be a circus going through this property owner's house. And that's another thing, as I mentioned it, as it's hitting in my brain, sometimes, and we've had this happen a few times this year. Um, we win the deal because the property owner wants nobody else to see the property until it's closed. They, they're like, you see it now, sign it now, and we're done. You'll get the keys when we get our money. But nobody else is coming in here. Yeah, no problem. Do you need to stay after? Do you need to post possession? Yeah. I do, I need that too. Okay, great. 
So if we can get you the post possession, nobody else comes to your house, you're ready to move forward? Well, nobody else is saying they can do that. Yeah, I know. But if we can do that, would that work for you? Yeah. Well, let's move forward. Okay. We're getting deals because of that. We're getting real, real great deals because we can either take it to real specific to people that I, we know will buy sight unseen, but for the most part, we just close them ourselves. But if you don't have the ability to close them yourselves, you bring them to the guys that know the business, that know how to close them, that are going to be really smooth, they're not going to be a problem, and you just move on. So it's nice to have a nice VIP list and also have a big, robust list, right? And I think that, you know, long term, I don't think, I know, I've been doing this 20 years. Long term, the relationships that you build with these cash buyers that are guaranteed to close and you know they're buying it themselves and it's not a lot of hassle, you're going to need them every few deals. You're going to need to work with them every few deals because it makes everything, you're going to make less and your disposition team's going to be mad and your acquisition team's going to be mad and you're going to be mad that you thought you were gonna make 25 and you make 17, eight, whatever. It's better to just get it done, move on. You're gonna do a thousand more deals in your life, 2,000, 10,000, who cares? Get it done, get it guaranteed, and move on and go win, 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 win more deals. So that is it. Guys, if you are getting value out of this, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button so that you know when new incredible instruction is coming to you. It's not content. It's instruction, baby. Content's for entertaining. Um, instructions to go out and build something great, right? Find some deals. So uh, if you're finding value, if you're getting value to this, fantastic. If not, either way, I love you. I'm, thank you so much for your attention and watching this. I hope that you go out and implement it. Matt, come on out. On behalf of Matt, my, my studio producer and the strongest guy in town. Boom, look at him. Uh, we, we love you. Thank you for joining us. Remember, keep your house clean, protect your health, increase your value to the world, and you'll live an incredible life. I'll see you next week. Go get him.